Alright, hey guys, welcome to my newest video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do normal map or pretty much just engraving and, or editing the texture, like the physical texture, not what it looks like, of a guns. Sorry, that was a pretty bad intro. Anyway, this was a user request, but I figured I'd make a good video since I'm getting partnered, hopefully, with Curse soon, as you can see here. I'm in the final stages, so hopefully this will be my first partnered video. Anyway, let's jump right in. So what we'll need for this is you'll need GIMP normal map. So let's go ahead and download this. I'll have a link in the description. 64-bit um, version is for if you have a 64-bit version of GIMP. Let's see what I have it over here. So I mean, if you're running a 64-bit computer, you should have that. 32-bit version should technically work on both. So if you're not sure, if you're having problems, download the 32-bit version. So this is where I'll be linking to. Just go ahead and click this. Boom, then click download. Then it's kind of tricky to install. If you saw my first video, I showed you how to install plugins, but just for a quick overview, you'll get something that looks like this. So, where you need to put that is in this folder C program files, GIMP 2, lib, GIMP 2.0 plugins. Basically, just go to wherever you installed GIMP and then go into uh, lib, GIMP 2.0 plugins, and that's where you'll just drag and drop all this stuff. You don't need the README file though. So you just click all this, put it in here. It's saying I'm overwriting because I already have an older version of um, GIMP normal maps, so it's kind of good that I'm updating. And it will probably give you a user account control thing. It'll pop up saying yes or no, just say yes. And here we go. All right, now if you had GIMP running, you'll have to close it and open it again. So as you can see, I have it right here. Opening GIMP. And now you'll have to decide on a skin you want to edit. You'll have to actually make something on the skin itself first so you can decide what you want to actually normal map. And also, when you're working with that, hopefully you see my other tutorials first. If not, you probably won't even have your files extracted. You need to extract your files first. So go watch my first video for that. I'll have a link on the screen or something with a little card over here or whatever. Anyway, um, once you have all your files extracted, just go ahead and open up one in GIMP. And the first video will also show you how to install the VTF plugin. So today we're going to edit the M4A1. I actually haven't made a skin of this before, so this is a perfect candidate. Alright, and now we're going to open the normal skin. So the normal skin's already been normal mapped. Alright, so let's go do something quick. So taking a look at this, we have the receiver on this side, the lower receiver, and we also have the other side of the lower receiver. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to first open up the tool the toolbox. So I can see the tools I'm working with and then open up layers and brushes so I can see this. And remember, when you're working, you want to save it as a GIMP file so you can actually have multiple layers. So the first thing we're going to do, add a new layer, make it transparent so we have two layers. This is going to be our working layer. And the third thing we're going to do is save as a GIMP file, so click save, bring a box like this, save as a GIMP file so we can always go back and edit our layers later. If you're doing a skin design, you'll want to have anything you want to have engraved or anything you want to have normal mapped, you will want that to be specifically on a separate layer. So give you an example, let's just do a, I don't know what we're going to do, let's do a money sign. Um, make it green and go like this. So now we have our dollar signs. This is just a very basic example, so you guys can do whatever you want with this. Just imagine I did a whole bunch of more fancy stuff. Alright, once you have it on its own separate layer, just going to go ahead and make sure you export your original skin. Remember, just like before, we'll need a skin file and we'll need a... Uh, what should you call it? We'll need a skin file and we'll need a normal map file this time. So we'll be working with two files instead of just one. So we're going to be exporting it as a VTF file and we're going to export it in our custom folder, again, just like before. If you forgot where that is, go to Insurgency, right click, Properties. I know I'm going a little bit fast, but this is all review, so you should know this. Browse Files, and that will take you to your Insurgency 2 folder. Uh, insurgency, go click Insurgency inside Insurgency 2, and then click Custom, and here we go, Skins. So now we go to Materials, Models, and then you have to make an, sorry, Weapons, and you make a new folder that matches the folder that we just opened, so M4. A1 and then we have to make sure we give it the exact same file name so you can copy that from either your GIMP file or from your VTF go back to GIMP 
weapons and oh you can copy uh, go ahead and put the name up here dot VTF don't click on anything L cool quick shortcut we can do open up the folder that we just made make sure it's the right path there should be uh, weapons weapons m4a1 m4a1 so we're good those two match I'll just double click up here and we'll have the full path copy this go up here and then you can paste make sure you put another slash in there to separate your file name from the folder and there we go alright so we're going to export this same settings as always 8-bit alright now we need to verify that it was actually saved as one layer so go ahead and open this up we're going to open it with GIMP let's close this one save changes open it with GIMP and it should be one layer and yes it is oh it only exported our bottom layer so as I told you last time sorry I forgot to do it this time you have to make sure you first copy it as one layer so how you do that is select all edit copy visible file create from clipboard this is all review then once you have another version that's one layer you may be saying why didn't we just merge this down well remember I said you want to have everything on separate layers so by having a second copy we can have everything on the same layer without messing up the uh, formatting we have over here so once we're here with our new layer and our super awesome swag tastic is that a word am I allowed to say that on YouTube um, skin we just go ahead and click file export and we just export over our old one so same thing this is all why it's always important to check your files just hit enter and then you'll see your file go ahead and replace it same settings advanced 8-bit this setting right here now once we close both of these discard close discard and open it again we have our dollar signs alright so that's a little bit of just review you guys when it came here for normal mapping and we're already almost 10 minutes in Wow sorry about that I'm not known for making short videos if you're new to this channel alright so once you have this file in you'll say okay well what was that normal map for uh, sorry what was the um, multi-layer thing for well here's where we're actually making a normal map so we have a normal map already of this made here I'll show you right now uh, look for the file it's the same file name except with underscore nm that's your normal map file so we're just going to open this for to show you what I'm talking about go ahead and open this as you can see here is kind of um, what's that uh, say like blue purple uh, a little bit of green in there so we need to make an image that's just like that but we don't want to mess any of this up if you take the normal map off your gun it just looks really really smooth everywhere it looks really weird I can't show you an example right now because I have to open like 10 more things but anyway we want to keep all this work in. The developers did a great job making all their guns look nice and angled and have nice stuff in there. So all we want to do is add to that. You could recreate it yourself if you wanted to, but we're just going to just do a simple addition. So what we're going to do is turn off this layer, select this all or any all your changes, all everything you want to have engraved. You just go ahead and select all. Make sure only those layers are visible. As you see, I turned off everything I don't want and then do edit copy visible so if you have multiple layers multiple things will be copied so you cr file create from clipboard that will give you another new layer I'm sorry another new image that's separate from this one so with this one what we're going to do is we're going to do filter map and then we're going to use normal map alright so it's kinda of hard to see we can do 3d preview um, but as you can see if you turn it to a slight angle you can see that the S is actually separate from the image, so it's no longer flat, it's actually 3D. You may say, that's great, but I want it to really pop. Well, there's filters for that. If you go to here, you can click go through, because there are a bunch of different options for filters. Uh, I don't know what any of these actually mean, I just know there are different things. As you see now, it pops a lot more, it's way more noticeable. You can just mess around with these settings if you want. Scale lets you definitely make it pop more. See, that definitely looks different. Instead of just having a flat image that is clearly visible, and the light affects it differently, as you can see in the 3D preview. I'm going to try to keep this under 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and get finished. Minimum Z. 
You can make it pop even more. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's see nine by nine. Now let's just do this. All right. Now, as you see, we got a 3D image. So, how do we actually import that to our and mix that with our current? Well, that's pretty easy. Just go ahead and click OK, and it will generate a normal map for you. You'll probably have a lot more than I do, but this is generally what it looks like. You'll have a lot more colors mixed in. But as you can see, this is a lot brighter than that, or a lot more opaque. So we'll have to work with that. Go ahead and do select, uh, select all, copy, and we're gonna make a new layer here. We're gonna do edit, paste. Oops, sorry. Make sure you say select all. Since they're the same image, if you do control V, it will make it so you paste back into the right spot. All right, so go ahead and anchor that down. And then on the mask, I can't really see that very well, but I think we have to fill it in too. So let's go ahead and paste it on the mask. All right, and then when you paste it in both the mask and the official image, it should show up with the about the same opacity of everything else, but you can see it's a little bit brighter because we made it stick out more. All right, so now we're going to export this just like the other one. It's just one layer, so we don't have to do anything fancy. Don't make, don't overwrite. Remember, overwrite's the original file. So we're going to do export, and we're going to paste in the path again. Put that in front. Add our slash, normal map, and go ahead and click export. Pretty much the same settings. Eight bit. All right, now let's go ahead and test this out. I can't do it in game, long story. I'm having computer problems at the moment, that's why everything's going slow. So we're just going to use the SDK, go to Insurgency, go to Bin, and look for SDK Launcher. Should be right here. If you can't read your text, just the second thing on the list. All right, Half-Life Model Viewer is now open. Let's just go ahead and load us in a model. Since we're editing the M4A one, it'll be under Weapons. And V is for View Model, W is for World Model. So we'll look for M4A one. All right, by default, you can see, this is what the gun will look like if you didn't have normal maps. I mean, it has some shaping to it. And yes, it has textures. But I mean, like, look how flat and boring it looks. So when you apply the normal mapping, this is what it will look like in game. So as you can see, there's a lot more definition to it and the dollar sign doesn't pop as much as it originally looked like but we can go back in and change that if we wanted to so as you can see yeah you can actually see how the light goes off the side like that right here you can see the fact that it is definitely three-dimensional and it actually looks like it's etched in there so let's do something a little bit fancier Let's see if I can find a lion's head. This will make a great thumbnail. Lion head tribal tattoo. And if you didn't know, lion uh, tribal tattoos are the best place to get engraving pictures because they just look so great. So um, let's go with this one. All right, and then uh, all we're gonna have to do, just like last time, select all, edit, uh, turn off a layer, copy visible, file, create from clipboard, just like before, filters, reshow normal map. All right, and as you can see, that gave us a slight problem of it being transparent, but we can always change that. Oops. Oh, hey, just gave us uh, two lions. All right, let's just. We'll give you a more dramatic example. All right, let's just go with this. All right, let's go back to our normal map. All right, let's hit Control Z a few times. Get rid of those silly little dollar signs and get something a lot cooler. Let's go ahead and paste it in. Oops, I didn't copy this right. 
Sorry about that. Select all, edit, copy visible, and let's paste it in. All right, anchor it down and paste it in the layer mask too. Anchor it down, and there we go. Let's go ahead and export this. Export, and let's go ahead and reload our gun. Boom. Now the only thing we forgot is to update our texture. That's fairly easy. Just go to here, select all, copy visible, and create from clipboard, file, export, and this stupid thing again. Copy and paste the folder name in and DM is the weapon, replace. Same filtering. All right, let's go ahead and refresh it. And boom, that is a nice gun right there. I wish I actually designed that line myself, but I did not. Oh wait, the dollar sign is still in there for some reason. I thought we got rid of that. Or oh, something on your side. No, it's on both. All right, well, that's it. That's how you get super fancy guns. Just remember to actually delete everything so you don't have leftover elements in there like I do. Alright, and I hope you guys had a good day. Sorry the video was too long, but that's just how I do. I hope that if you have any questions, just go ahead and post them down below. I will not be distributing this gun since it's not official in my work. So yeah, see you guys later. Bye.